let us begin so why we are doing this class what is the purpose of this class so purpose of this class basically is to introduce you all with sap mm materials management and warehouse management module introduction in one hour you can only introduce the reason of this introduction class is basically to provide an perspective to provide an overview so at the end of an hour and so you can get an idea that when we talk about sap mm and w module what does mm wm module consist of mm means materials management wm means warehouse management both of them are the core modules of sap there are many other modules this happen to be one of the core module so today our discussion will be on sap materials management and warehouse management module <clears throat> thank you everyone um, who we have on the session so let me just go through so we have um, on the session today isak valeri welcome chandrasekhar welcome maksud welcome aziz welcome tasa taylor welcome venkatesh welcome um, we have uh, shivansu welcome priya welcome alpes welcome emanuel welcome tasneem abdul welcome mahesh welcome uh, pallavi welcome ellen welcome uh, mohammed welcome mohammed ahmed welcome and pratik uh, welcome patricia welcome to the session khaja nasruddin welcome mohammed mazid welcome uh, fabricio welcome and bala shakti welcome so <clears throat> i welcome you to the session and uh, thank you all for uh, coming and joining the session i just want to go through so i know who we have in the class and uh, briefly introducing myself i've been doing sap since 1998 uh, in my professional experience i was associate partner with ibm and i was senior director with accenture and capgemini I, i don't work anywhere i have taken academics full time these are some of the modules which i um, these are some of the companies where i did sap implementation um and i don't know how many thousand people i have taught many people ask i have no clue many thousand people i have taught now this is the objective of this workshop today so next one hour and so this is what we will try to understand that what are the basic business processes of procuring material and services in sap remember when you're trying to learn every functional module and i tell this in every class you must learn it from the business process perspective at the end of the functional consultant you are not becoming a programmer you are becoming a functional consultant and as a functional consultant it is very important to understand everything from the business process business situation business perspective that in a company how we could be using this another thing is integration points which basically means that okay mm there are many other modules how they integrate it is not possible it is not required that you learn 10 modules or five modules so uh, it is not possible it's not required it's not needed if you learn 
some of the module that is fine but understanding the integration is important how do you do the handshake that's important reporting and analytics that is important how can we report how can we analyze and understand the procurement process now this picture which you see here this is called sap diamond and uh, maybe because it is in diamond shape and you will see certain colors and these colors have some meaning you know green color you have a red color you have a yellow color you have a purple color you have a blue color now each color represent the different buckets different areas of sap green is logistic red is finance yellow is hr this purple color is some of the technical aspects of sap and this blue ocean is how sap is constructed in a programming language that is called abap our focus there are so many module sd mm production planning quality management plant maintenance hr finance controlling workflow industry solution etc 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 right so many modules but our focus is on materials management so when we are learning materials management we are learning one part of this logistics that is what this basically means and then we have a materials management and then in material management we have a purchasing we have a good receipt we have invoice verification and how do we do the finance and these are the thing we're going to discuss and talk about in the session today so materials management is part of green which basically means part of logistics so materials management is the component of logistics and in the logistics there are mm module there is sd module there is a production planning module quality management module project system module uh, plant maintenance module etc 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 sector, et sector. so we are learning one module of the logistic the green color which we saw in the last slide now what is materials management talks about now when you look at the materials management this has the two words materials and management so two words materials management therefore we are managing the entire material cycle that is the purpose that is the goal materials management now when we talk about the materials management now every company will have a material that is why materials management is important you are a manufacturing company you are manufacturing your retail company your pharmaceutical your apparel your whatever company you make shoes or you make aeroplanes whatever you do there is always a material you go to costco is full of certain materials so materials is a intrinsic part of every company you cannot have a company without materials therefore material management module is very integrally connected with or functions that is why it is so much valuable remember that now there are certain functions which is not always there like for example manufacturing some companies manufacturing some are not some are just the retail but some are manufacturing some are both but irrespective of your nature 
materials is always there. Therefore, materials management, if anywhere there's an SAP, there will be materials management. There has to be. Now, let us understand this material management with this picture. Now, what is this picture basically means? Let's understand this. Now, in this picture, what do we see? Again, there are certain colors. There are boxes with different colors. So, this um, yellowish color or orange or whatever we call it, all these boxes with this color is part of MM. MM module is starts, if you see on the top, material planning. In my company, somewhere I need a material. Finished material, raw material, this material, that material. I have a new employee, I need a laptop, you need a material. You need some maintenance item, repair item, operation item, service item, package, many kind of items, many kind of materials. Now, if you need a material, then there, if you see the two arrows out, look at the flow. The first arrow talks about production planning. Second is purchasing. If I need a material, there are two, only two sources. Either I purchase that material from outside or I produce this, if I'm a manufacturing company, I will be producing in-house in my production plant. Or if I'm not, then I will be purchasing from somewhere. Purchasing in SAP is called external procurement because we are buying from outside. And production is called internal procurement because we are producing that material in-house. Now, that is where we integrate with the production, but that's not our subject for today. That is why it is a different color this bluish color. Then after the purchasing, we create a purchase order and then we send this and provide this purchase order to the supplier. And one fine phoning, the supplier comes and supply the material to me. That's where the inventory management come into the picture. We do a good receipt. Vendor comes and say, well, you ask material, you got it. And then we do good receipt. That is where we have good receipt process here. Then after good receipt, the last step is the invoice verification, which basically means I verify the invoice. And when I verify the invoice, that is where we integrate with the financial accounting. And here we integrate with sales. If I have a material, then I can sell it. So in this picture, what we see, we see planning, purchasing, inventory management, invoice verification, how they're flowing with each other. Then connecting with the finance function, then connecting with the sales function, then connecting with the production function. That is how different modules are interconnected with each other. Now, in every module in SAP, every module, there are four pillars. Number one, organization data. Number two, master data. Number three, business processes. Number four, reporting and analytics. So let us understand this. What does this really mean? So in SAP, In SAP, every module is constructed with the following pillars. I'm writing, it's not writing somewhere. It's strange. Okay.
in LCP, every module has following steps. First is called organization data. Second is organized data, master data, business processes, and reporting. So when we say every module, every module means every module, SD, MM, FI, PP, QM, and all those different modules. If you understand one module, and if you understand the flow of the data in one module, you can understand others quite similarly, quite easily. But understanding one is important because all these modules are constructed in similar way. Okay. Now let us understand that. So here, if you look at my screen, there is an organization data and master data. Then there will be a business processes, reporting, and analytics. In organization data, these are the different elements of organization data. The first is company code. Second is plant. Third is store location. Fourth is purchase organization. Fifth is a purchasing group. Now, what is organization data? And now, what does this basically mean? Organization data defines internal structure of enterprise. What does that basically mean? For example, we have a plant. Plant basically means where you do the manufacturing production. That is the plant. Then you have a stores location, right? Or warehouses. Where you keep your material. Then you can have a purchase organization. Purchase organization is like a purchasing department where you are, uh, because in your company, there has to be someone who is responsible for purchasing the goods. Who does that? And that is done by the purchasing organization. And then we have purchasing group. Purchasing group are the buyers in the company. You have a uh, different kind of uh, people, Michael, Thomas, you know, various people working in your company. Those are called purchasing group. Okay. And uh, this is called organization data because you have to define how many plant, how many stores, how many warehouses, how many purchasing department, how many people are working into it, how many stores you have. That all you have to define upfront. And that is where the organization data come into the picture. That is where organization data come into the picture. That is what we have here. Then next thing which we have is the master data. And in the master data, you will see two things. One is material master. Second one is the vendor master. So what we have in master data, two things. Vendor master. Vendor master basically means supplier. Ultimately, there has to be someone who is supplying the material. And then there's a material master. Material master basically means different type of materials, items, articles, 
you know, which you have in your company. You know, you have a finished good, you have a raw material, you have a semi-finished, you have maintenance item, you have repair item, you have operation item, you have packaging item, different kind of items which you have in your the system. And that is what you have as a master data in the system. So you have organized data, and then you have a master data. In the system and that is what you see material and the vendor material master is what material master is basically different type of material which you have in your company that is material master in the material master how can you create a material master okay now let me log into SAP so this is the SAP logon. We see that a small icon. If you click on it, you will have a um, uh, SAP uh, logon as well. And then you can log in. This is called SAP graphical user interface. And then you have ID. And then you have a, you enter your password. You enter your ID, you enter your password, and then you log in into SAP. So now you're looking at the SAP. This is what the SAP is. Okay. So I hope um, my voice and all that coming to you all properly. Okay. So here I'm in the SAP. Now in SAP, you will see different modules. If you go to logistics, there are different modules in logistics. What we are talking about is the materials management. This is materials management. Then there's a sales and distribution, logistic execution, production. We will go to other modules also. But we, our primary focus is materials management, but we will also talk about sales and distribution, logistic execution. We'll also go to production and other functions. So we go to materials management. In the materials management, here we have material master. Now, if I want to create a material master, how can we do that? We click on it. And then we say create and immediately. We will, don't worry about it. This is the basic transaction I'm doing. We're gonna do this transaction many, 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 many times. I'm just doing some basic transaction so you can get an idea about some of the look and feel of the SAP. So do not try to memorize all the steps and all that. Every class is video recorded. So, so they are, you know, don't try to memorize everything. So here, if I'm creating a material system says, okay, what kind of uh, industry sector we can choose whatever, mechanical engineering. It's just an emotional attachment of being a mechanical engineer, nothing else. What kind of uh, material type? So in the material type, we can type, let's say raw material, ROH. So this is a raw material, ROH. And then we hit enter. Now here we have a different views. See the different views. And that is what you will see here, you know, different views, primary views, purchasing, sales, purchasing, storage, accounting, and all that. These, this is what you have a different views. Now, views basically means every department, which basically means where we want to maintain this material, where we want to use this material. And wherever we want to use this material, we can select the view. Do you want to use this material in purchasing? Do we want to use this material in sales? Do we want to use material in foreign trade, in, in MRP, in stories, in warehousing, in quality, in accounting, in costing? We can select some minimum view, which I require from the purchasing. In our class, we'll go through all the different views during the course. And when we creating material system ask, okay, in, the, in this plant, in this is to location, one material could be in one plant, two plant, 20 plant, all the plants, some of the plant, one. So you can define which plant this material belong to. Now here, if I want to create a, um, you know, you can create a description, whatever description it is. We say this is a description of the material. And we put a base unit measure each material group what kind of a material it is 
So we say, you know, these are different material groups. Fasteners, mechanical, cables, pumps, electronic, PCs, board, whatever. You can choose, doesn't make a difference. Monitors, hard drives. What kind of, so these groups and all that are freely definable. You can define as many groups as you want. Hit enter. When we hit enter, we come to purchasing view. This is purchasing view. What is the purchasing group? Who is, who is the buyer? Hit enter. Hit enter. Then we come to accounting view. So when I could come to accounting view, and then we, there is something called valuation class. Valuation class has a very significant uh, significance on the valuation of the material. So when we are doing uh, inventory management, we'll talk about what is uh, valuation class and what does it do. And then we put it in price, hit enter. Do you, system says, oh, this is the last screen. Do you want to save it? Yes, we want to save it. And we save it. So what happened? Material 33097 created. So we can make a note of the material master. This is the material master we created. 33097. Now coming back to my PDF, so we have a different views. We looked at it and we saw that material when we are creating, we can define different plant, different store location because one in the my company, I might have a five plant, 10 plant, 20 plant, 100 plant. So how many plant, which plant this material is relevant or applicable. So we can define that material for that plant or multiple plants if you want to. The second is the vendor master. There's another important master data for MM perspective, the vendor, the supplier. Ultimately, material is coming from someone and the supplier of that material that entity who supply the material in SAP is called vendor master. Vendor is the supplier. Now let us talk about this vendor master. Where is this vendor master? So let's quickly also create a vendor master. So we go back. We come to initial screen. This is all uh, menu driven here. Yeah? Do not try to memorize uh, everything today because there's too many clicks and all that. This all comes gradually. And then there's a video recording. <clears throat> so here we have a purchasing. Then we have to master data. And here we have a vendor. And central. And create. Now you might have noticed in material master or vendor master there is a there is a key here. This is called transaction code. This is XK01. XK01 is a transaction code for creating a vendor master. If I click on it, it takes me to create vendor initial screen. Or if I type XK01, it takes me directly. So transaction code is like a shortcut keys. So you can just type it and it takes you to the transaction. So you don't need to click 20 times. But normally in my class, I'd go both ways. I'd go to the menu path also, so we know what menu path it is. And then I also use transaction code. So I use both. Okay. So here we have a company code. So I can use a company code. So that is company code 1000, purchase organ 1000. There's account group. Account group is a grouping of the customer. How do you want to group the customer? Enter. Uh, this is the vendor screen. So what is the name of the vendor? You can type any name, whatever you want. Complete vendor. How do you like search it? What street? Which highway, which road it is? Which, what is the house number? What is the postal code? Which city? 
which country, what state, and then you will also like to maintain the phone number, mobile phone, fax number, this, that, and all that. So all that information you can enter in the system. Hit enter. I want to add many other things here. There are almost 700 fields in Vendor Master. Yeah? So if I go through all the 700 fields, we can talk about two, uh, two hours only on Vendor Master. But we are talking about some of the important and basic field. What is the tax ID of the vendor? You know, so we can enter the tax ID. What is the bank information? Which bank we need to send the check? What is the contact person? Contact person basically means when we go to the, my uh, uh, supplier, on the supplier side, I have a contact. You know, Michael, Thomas, Richard. We can put their contact numbers. Then there's a reconciliation account. Reconciliation account basically means vendor is a creditor. We owe the money. So when we give the invoice, it creates a liability. So in the finance, it goes to some account. So that liability account is a reconciliation account. It's a subledger. Cash management group. Who manages the cash? Who will be responsible for paying this supplier? What is the payment term? How soon we want to pay to this vendor? You know, we can define different different payment terms. There are different payment terms here. Hit enter. Hit enter. Then we have a currency. What currency we want to handle here? Okay. So we can have different type of currencies. And uh, how do you want to handle this currency? What is the payment term? What is the in quota? In quota basically means who will be supplying the material? They're going to supply or we're going to go pick up? What is the minimum order value? Who is the salesperson when we call them? What is his name? His name is Thomas. What is his telephone number? And many other fields. There are more than 700 fields. Hit enter, hit enter, and we hit save. Now see the message in the bottom. Look at carefully. Vendor 105937 has been created for company code 1000, purchase organization 1000. So we are able to create a vendor. We make a note of the vendor. This is my vendor. And we created a vendor master. We did two exercises. Good news. We have created two exercises. And we have 9,998 left. Two are done. In these material vendor also, we're going to do numerous times, numerous different ways. We are doing the worst, most basic just to get an idea. So we can get a basic idea. So we have uh, talked about organization data. We talked the master data. In organization data, we talked about different organization elements like plants, stores, warehouses, purchasing department, financing department. These are all called different organization data. Then we have master data. Master data basically means there are many other master data, by the way. We have not talked about all of them. But we talked about two of the most important. One is material master and the second one is the vendor master. Okay. So material master and the vendor master. These are the two most important. We also created exercise in which we created material master exercise also. And we create a vendor master exercise also. Now we want to talk about business processes. Okay, let's do that. Now, if you wanted to see the end to end MM cycle, 
that what kind of a cycle you have end to end in mm then these are the eight steps step 1 2 3 4 5 8 9 you know 7 8 now let's understand that the first step is determined requirements i mentioned to you before materials management module is about materials and re determined requirement see the point number one determined requirement means we need to find out that somewhere there's a need for a material that need for a material is the basis for mm module then after the requirements the next point is the source determination which basically means somebody has to say okay i need this material but who is the supplier Sometimes we have to do vendor selection also means I might have a multiple vendors. And if I have a multiple vendors, everyone might have their own price and terms and conditions and this and that. Then we select the vendor, which one to choose. And after the point number three, vendor selection, there's a point number four, which is order processing. Means I create a purchase order. We're going to do that. And then step number five, if you need it, we do order follow. We call vendor. Sorry, we give a PO. What happened to the material? Why is late? And then point number six, we do good receipt and inventory management. We verify inventory. The point number seven, invoice verification. In the invoice verification, we verify the invoice. That is a point number seven. And the point number eight, finally, we pay to the supplier. He supplied the material to us, and then he submitted his invoice. We acknowledge his invoice, and then we finally make a payment. And that is the making payment is part of finance. But this is end to end MM cycle. So if I say what is end to end MM cycle, these eight steps are. MM cycle. That's it. Now, in order for that eight steps, these are the four documents. These are the four documents, which is purchase requisition. There's a doc number one, purchase order, doc number two, good receipt, doc number three, invoice processing, doc number four. So these are four documents in SAP, four documents. Purchase requisition, purchase order, good receipt, invoice processing. Eight steps and these are the four documents we're going to do all the four and in parallel to that we have a planning reporting analytic we need to know what's going on how many POs the first and foremost is purchase acquisition now what is purchase acquisition remember I mentioned to you that MM module is starts that somewhere there's a need for a material. How do you capture that need of material? That is captured in this document that is called purchase requisition. Is a request or instruction for purchasing department to procure a certain quantity of a material or service by certain date. If I tell purchasing department that I need this material, what do we do? We create a purchase requisition. Purchase requisition can be created in multiple different ways. Direct entry, we can create it manually. MRP means material requirement planning, where we can create automatically. Auto MRP, you can create automatically. There's a Harry Potter in SAP. 
with the purchase requisition, you determine the source. And then there is a religious strategy, means that you, you do an approval. And after approval, then you can create a purchase order. So MRP, you can MRP means creating purchase requisition order. Now, where this MRP come into the picture? <clears throat> now, I was um, doing this project in Johnson & Johnson. They had uh, almost half a million different type of item. Now, half a million different type of items is a huge number, right? Now, how do you know when to buy which one? And if somebody looking at the half a million item, you need an army. So what system do you can define the order level, reorder point and safety stuff. And based upon all these reordering parameters, system can do ordering itself. You run the MRP program. And it will create a request. When system see that you need a material, system will create a request. Or you can manually create also. We will learn in both methods. Now, if I want to create a purchase requisition, how do we do? So we go back and uh, we go to purchase requisition. This is purchase requisition. And this is ME51N create. So we're creating purchase requisition. And this is the screen for purchase requisition, which you see at your front. So now here, we have a material. And we can select the material. We have the material we created 330.97. We can select also. 97. I need... Um, 100 pieces. I need in the plant 1000. I need this when? I need it tomorrow or <coughs> whatever date. So this is the date. So we have, and this is a purchase requisition. So we have this is my material, this is the quantity, this is the date. This is the plant and I need the material. And I say, this is save button. You see this small Honda sign, save. See the message in the bottom, purchase requisition number 1000 created. Good news. You have created another exercise. So we created a Purchase requisition. Now we got a purchase requisition. What happened next? After purchase requisition, the next thing is, is a purchase order. Purchase order is a formal document. This is the formal document with the vendor. Because with the purchase order, you're telling your vendor that you need this material. That is why this is this material is called a formal transaction. And that is why this is basically is considered a formal material. is a legal document. It is between buyer and the seller. And in that purchase order, you have vendor, you have material, you have a quantity, you have a price, oops, you have terms, you have a delivery date, you have a location, etc. All these things we have and all these information you can have in the purchase order how do we create a purchase order 
So if you look at it here, you can create a purchase order with reference to a purchase requisition. You can create a purchase order. If you look at these boxes for a stock item, consumable item, service item, it's different type of items you can purchase. Now, okay, how do we create a purchase order? Let's do that. So we exit out. And this is where we have purchase order and transaction code ME5021N. We hit enter. And here we check our purchase requisition 271. We see here in the site our purchase requisition 271. We select that. And this adopt button we adopt. It copies everything. It copies my material, my quantity, my price. I need to enter the vendor though. So I select the vendor we created. This is the vendor we created 105937. We created. Now we need to enter the price. What is the, my purchase price? I say my purchase price is ten dollar per piece. And system says save. We save it. Good news. The fourth exercise of today is done. We learn how to create a simple purchase order. We're going to create this purchase order easily in time. Dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of the time. We did next exercise. Purchase order. So we created a purchase order. We create a purchase order. What next? Purchase order, we can create in multiple different ways. If you see this slide, we can create a purchase order with reference to purchase requisition, which we did. We can create a purchase order with reference to contract. So in SAP, there is a contract also, a different kind of agreements also. So different kind of agreements, contracts we can do. We're going to learn that actually. And then you can also create a purchase order with the reference, reference document. You can also have a quotation. So you can have a different type of purchasing document. Purchase acquisition, purchase orders, RFQs, quotations, agreements, contracts. We have not done them. Otherwise, course will finish today. Little too premature. Pre we are doing basic transactions. But there are many more. And after that, what happens? So we create a purchase order. We got a purchase order. We send that purchase order to the supplier. And then what happens? Supplier. create supplies material to me and when the supplier supply the material to me what do we do we do a good receipt receive against my order against my purchase price system create different accounting documents system update my history so what happens one fine morning my vendor comes, material on the truck. We do a good receipt for that material. And then we put that material in the warehouse. And then what happens? We get the material in our warehouse. The result of Guru Seed. So when do we Guru Seed? What happens actually? 
what is the result of it? Many things happen. Let's do a guru sit. We do next exercise and we talked about next exercise that is called goods receipt. Receiving the material. How do we do that? So we take our purchase order. So this is our purchase order. We go back. We go to inventory management. We go to good moment. And we go to me. This is Guru Sit. This is where we do Guru Sit. So we go to Migo. Okay, so we go to Guru Seat. This is Guru Seat. So I want to do Guru Seat and guess purchase order. And uh, we hit enter. We are doing Guru Seat and guess purchase order. We are doing in this plant. We are doing it in this sister location. Which material? This is the material. How much quantity? 100 pieces. Which plant? 1000. Restore location? 001. Against which purchase order? Against this purchase order. Who is the supplier? This is the supplier. This is the vendor we created today. We hit item OK. We hit check. The system says earliest possible delivery date is 16. Now, in the PO, we enter deluded. What system telling me that you're receiving the material before time? He said, yeah, that's fine. We receive it. And we save it. See the message in the bottom. Material document 60024 posted. Material document. See here. We have different document. Material document accounting document stock get updated quantity comes up we can check that actually so if i go back and uh, if i go to material document display and uh, here i can put my material document this is my material document this is my accounting document this is integration with the finance because the when material comes in this is also my inventory and because this is my inventory, that is why it gives me that information. Accounting document. Update my finance. Inventory is my asset. So when we get inventory, inventory is, acts as my asset. That is why here we have an accounting document. Material document different stock account get updated my quantity get updated because we got a material that is what we see here now after guru said what is next then i put the material in the warehouse i got a material vendor came unloaded the material on my receiving area and now from the receiving area we place the material in the warehouse. So inventory management put the material into the warehouse. Warehouse management, we will be spending many hours. It's a very important topic. Okay. Last but not least, what happens? We have a very invoice verification, which basically means now vendor says, you ask me material, we supply it to you. You received it. This is my invoice. And now we receive the invoice. We acknowledge the invoice. And then we enter that invoice submitted by the vendor in the system. That's where the invoice processing come into the picture. Invoice verification. So what happened? So there's a purchase order. Against this purchase order, we create a guru seat. Which we did. 
So we create a purchase order. We create a guru seat. And then against the guru seat, vendor submit the invoice. Then we do the invoice verification. We verify the invoice submitted by the vendor. Okay. Now we go back. We close all these windows. Close, close. Now we go to the next step and the last step, which is the invoice verification. We verify the invoice submitted by the vendor. And we make a note of the PO. Yeah, this is the PO number. So we create a guru seat. Now we do the next step and the last step, which is the logistics invoice verification. That is our next step. Okay, let's do that. This is the invoice verification. This is the document entry. And this is the good Miro. And we enter the invoice date. Enter the invoice date. Enter the amount, $1,000. Enter my PO number. PO number does not exist. Did I copy? Yeah, not the complete data. Okay. Just one digit. This is fine now. Okay. Balance is zero. And we save it. We hit enter. See the message in the bottom. Document 5105600 has been posted. Now, if I want to go to purchase order, I will see PO history. I see the PO history. If I go to purchase order, this is the purchase order. Now here in the purchase order, we have a, this is a PO, ordered quantity 100. Delivered quantity, Hundred means enter quantity has been delivered. Is still to be delivered zero. Nothing is left over. Invoice entire quantity hundred pieces. And then we go to item detail. And then in item detail we go to purchase order history. And this is the system gives me a history of the everything what we have done so far. And what does it say? And it tells us like um, this is the Guru seat on this date for this quantity, your invoice receipt for this quantity, for this amount. This is a receipt number. This is invoice receipt number. So if you see the end-to-end -end MM cycle and the core transactions of SAP MM cycle, these are some of the transactions of SAP. That is what this basically means. That is what we have done. End to end purchasing cycle. So I thank you for coming. If you have any question, uh, we can take few questions. This is already one hour and uh, so, but you're welcome. There's a question section. You can type your question if you have. Um, I will give my number also. I think most of you I have already spoken, but I will give my number. My email address first. This is my email address. You're very welcome to make a note of my email address. And my phone number is 973-885-7245. Make sure the people, international people, this is a USA number, yeah? If people dialing from India or Europe or somewhere else, make sure that this is a 
US number. And uh, we see this is my email address. You're welcome to write me email. This number is also on WhatsApp. So this there is a WhatsApp also if somebody calling from overseas and all that. And uh, if you are an in you know local in US, then you can always call me and all. Okay. So if there is no question, then uh, I think uh, we are done for today. With that, I would like to thank you all. And I really appreciate you joining this session today. And um, I hope to talk to you again. And with that, you have a good evening and uh, talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank <clears throat> you.